Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Well, we're looking at Psalm 62, another Psalm of David. We know this from the title because it says to the chief musician, to Duduthan, a Psalm of David. Honestly, if we didn't have the title, I think we'd read this Psalm and say, oh, this must be one of David's Psalms. Well, we know that it is from the title, but uh, when it was written, we're not sure historically or biblically as you go back and read the story of David through the books of First and Second Samuel. And, and as we look at it, we believe there's maybe three possibilities. Maybe it's when he was first fleeing from Saul uh, for his life, as many of these Psalms have been. And he's asking God for help. He's asking God to be his refuge, his strength, his rock. Uh, maybe it's the time when uh, he became king, some people believe, and at the first seven years at Hebron, and he's taken over the kingdom, and yet the northern kingdom uh, is still under, for seven years, under the reign of Saul's son up there, and uh, fighting against the forces of David from Hebron. And David is trusting in the Lord to establish the kingdom and bring Israel back together. Maybe it's then, or, or maybe it's, some believe it's the time when he's fleeing from his son Absalom, and there he is again crying out for God to help him. But whatever, whenever it was written, it still has tremendous uh, implications and encouragements for us today because David for sure is depending upon God to to be his trust, to be his rock, to be the anchor of his soul. And uh, in God alone, there's so many titles you could give uh, this psalm. Spurgeon called it the only psalm, only psalm, because only in God, David says, I'm going to put my trust. So let's read some of these verses. And now that we've given a little background to it, uh, let's see if we can uh, understand some things from the verses themselves. Truly, David says, truly, verily, my soul silently waits for God. From Him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Uh, the ESV version says, I shall not be shaken. How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. Selah. Oh, my soul, wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in it. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. And then there's four closing verses that we'll look at probably tomorrow. And so we see from this that he calls out to God as his anchor, the anchor of his soul. And it can't help help make me but think about Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. And it tells us, If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, have become a minister. And then the writer of Hebrews, he talks about, and I love this in Hebrews chapter 6, about the anchor in verse 19 or, or verse 18. He says that by two immutable things in which it's impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong, a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And then we'll tomorrow read another passage from, I believe, Hebrews chapter 12, as we talk about those things that cannot be shaken. So David is depending upon God to be the anchor, the rock that he anchors in to, that uh, he would not be shaken. He would not be moved. And my friend, when you make Jesus Christ the rock of your life, you trust him. You make sure your hope is rooted in the gospel, the truth that God loves you. Christ died for you. He rose again the third day. You would not be moved. God is the God alone 
who can keep you and take care of you no matter what the circumstances are, and you can trust Him today. Well, God bless you as you read and meditate on this psalm with us these next couple days. God bless. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.